Hey everyone, uh, just woke up. Um, I am really tired, I've hardly slept. I've been too excited about uh, going for my pre-op today. Um, it's just after six o'clock. So yeah, time to get ready. <laughs> See you later. Hi everyone, that's us just heading to the train station to say hi. Hi. Hi Hi. Uh, yeah, that's us just heading to the train station. Had to run back home because someone forgot to bring their tea. Um, yeah, what time's the train? Yeah, change at about half seven. Hopefully, gonna be able to get a nap. Like, right, cause I'm knackered. <laughs> so yeah, see you in a little bit. Bye. Hi everyone. So yeah, that's us on the train heading down to Manchester. What is it? Um, I don't know how long the train journey is. It's about just about over two hours. Yeah, it's about two hours. So I'm definitely going to catch some sleep. If you're wondering about the black eye, um, I tried to do a backflip and when I went to tuck in, I need myself in the eye. So yeah, that's going to be a fun one to explain to my surgeon today. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right, well I'm going to try and see if I can get a nap or something. Go finish my hot chocolate first. So, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, that's us just got into Manchester, just leaving the train station. So yeah, now we've got to go on a nearly 40 minute bus journey to get to the hospital. Didn't manage to get asleep on the train. Uh, it wasn't that comfy and the train was packed and all but it's warm. So, not complaining about the weather. At least it's dry. Yeah. It dry the last time. No, it wasn't the last time we were here. It was pure pouring it down with rain. We had to run into the co-op. So, yeah, just heading to the train. And then, heading to the bus, even. And then, sorted. So, see you later. Hi everyone, that is us now off the bus at the hospital just try to figure out where I need to go. Um, I think my first appointment is with my surgeon and then after that I've got another appointment um, to go see the, I think it's the anaesthesiologist isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, go see the anaesthesiologist and I'll know exactly what the crack is and yeah. So I'm just heading into outpatient F for now and I'll let you know how it goes. See you later. Bye. You want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, so that's me um, just getting a quick hot chocolate at the hospital. Um, I've seen everyone who I need to see. Um, I've seen the surgeon. I've seen the nurse. And I've seen the anaesthesiologist. Had my blood taken and all that. Um, spoke about the pros and cons and stuff. Seen pictures. Um, of how it's going to look and um, been told what could happen and stuff like that and this is me now got my letter to be admitted in on the 18th of June at half seven for my surgery <laughs> so yeah it's starting to get a bit realer now like now that I've got this in my hand and it's actually from the hospital it's like means more than what the letters that I got sent through to me got. Because it's that one step closer, I know times and everything now. Um, so yeah. Uh, I've got a load of I've got a load of leaflets to read about. Like, I've literally got like a library of hospital leaflets to read about loads of different things. Um, so that'll be train reading. Uh, so now I just need to start um, getting the stuff in that needs to be in, start sorting out accommodation and stuff, and then I'll be having my surgery, like, in 21 days, three weeks, it's 
so close. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, in three weeks, I will never have to wear a binder again. What do you think about it, Mum? We turn that over while I'm eating. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Three weeks as of today, well, admitted to hospital, at your operation. And we'll get you home on Sunday with a bit of luck. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully home on Sunday. Yep. Yeah. So I'm staying in for two nights. They said they said I could I could leave in one night, but the most I'll stay is two nights. Hopefully I won't have to come home with the drains in. But if I do come home with the drains in, then I can get them removed off my home. Uh, so <coughs> yeah, come back in the so yeah, and then after that I've got to come back within about two weeks, like roughly two weeks to get the full dressings removed. And then after that I'll be on rest for six weeks. And then I'm going to start going to the gym. I've actually asked my mum for my birthday if she can get me a gym membership so I can build up my like pectoral muscles and stuff. And so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, I, I'm just like really, really happy at the moment. Like, it's unbelievable how close it is. Like, it's just, it's just unreal. Like, <laughs> but I'm trying to not get myself like too excited about it because, like, things can happen. There could be emergencies, stuff like that. So I'm trying my best not to. I like, get too excited about it, just in case. But hopefully none of that will happen, and it will all go to plan. So yeah, I'll give you another update later on. See you later. Bye. Go say bye. Bye. Hi guys. So, we're waiting about at the train station, because the cheapest ticket back from Manchester was £12.20 for the both of us and that's not till 20 past 8 so yeah just hanging about for a bit we'll probably pop in for a hot chocolate in the cafe over there um, I'm really tired <laughs> I just want to go home to my bed I'm still like really happy with how things have went today. Like when I first went I was like really really nervous. Like I was sat in the waiting room really really nervous. Um, but yeah everything went fine. I had a blood test, got tested for MRSA. At one point got told that there's a chance I could die. Probably isn't the best thing to hear. But Apparently it's a very, very, very slim chance, so that's alright, they just need to tell you it, because there is a slight chance of it happening. Um, but yeah, so we're just having a wee chill, I'm definitely going to have a nap on the train, didn't get a nap on the way here, sadly, but I'll hopefully get one oh, on the way back. So, yeah, speak to you later, guys. Bye. Hi, everyone. So, that's us running to the wee cafe and uh, waiting on the train. Once I get on the train, I'm going to go through all the stuff that um, I got from the hospital today. Um, it was mostly just leaflets, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It's just through the booklets and that to look through, read through. Yeah. So, I'll go through them. I got a bit of paperwork about um, the, sort of like, what would you call them? What? Like, the bad things that could happen. I was going to say side effects, but that's not really what yeah. is it? Every prob probability. Yeah, the probabilities of stuff going wrong. Um, so I got a little bit of paperwork on that, so I'm going to go through stuff like that once I get on the train. 
Um, I'm going to have a can of energy juice and then hopefully I'll be more awake. <laughs> so, yeah, speak to you soon. Bye. You like to say bye? Bye. Hi guys, so that's me, I'm a bit more awake now, I've had my can of energy juice, so I'm feeling a bit more awake, um, so I can actually properly talk about what happened today. So, we went up to the hospital, didn't we? You want me to come in? <laughs> Mom's cold at the moment, the train is quite cold, even though there's no windows, like, there's no windows that can be open, it's cold. But, uh, anyway, so... We went to the hospital today. Um, I sat and waited to see um, my surgeon. <coughs> you alright? <coughs> sat, sat and waited to see my surgeon. Um, when I went in, I had to speak to a nurse first. The nurse basically told me, um, like, sort of what could go wrong stuff like that, like very mildly what could go wrong. And I got a lovely little uh, leaflet, booklet, whatever, about um, my surgery. Just basically telling me about um, what to bring and stuff like that, and about complications of surgery, infections, blood clots, signs of blood clots, what to bring when you're admitted, uh, when will the drains be removed, what to look out for, dressings, pain and discomfort, bruising and swelling, what, what's that? Steroma? Steroma. Yep. Fluid, fluid under the skin. Um, and then things that I shouldn't do. Hematoma, is that right? Yep. Hematomas, um, returning home after my surgery, things I should do, support after discharge, and at the bottom it's just got a bit of a contact information about what I should and shouldn't do. Um, and contact information, sorry, contact information if I have any problems or concerns. Um, so then after I saw the nurse, I got to see my surgeon. Um, apparently I'm going to have three people in, in my surgery. Um, I don't know exactly who's doing the surgery, 100% um, yet. I didn't get to meet one of the people who are going to be there who I think is doing most of the surgery, um, but hopefully get to meet her on the actual day. Um, and that's when uh, the surgeon who I've seen before um, was nice enough to sit and give me a test about what could possibly go wrong in my surgery. Um, and this is it here, this is just a consent form that you need to fill out. Um, it just says here, this is the things that could go wrong. Therefore, does that say seizures? Yeah. Yeah, therefore seizures from anaesthetic, uh, complications, um, poor cosmetic results, um, Need for proper surgery, loose nipples, lovely, uh, <laughs> blood clots, what's that? Infection, yeah, infection, um, loss of sensation, loss of nipple, fluid build up, poor scars, um, whether it be wide scars or thick scars, um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, she was telling me though when she said, she said to me, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? And I said, well, I could die. And she went, yeah, that's right. I was like, oh, nice. Um, but that's only that's only with the anaesthetic and if there's any complications. But when I had my appendix out, I was under anaesthetic and I was completely fine. So I'm sure I'll be fine this time. And she's told me that the chances of anything going wrong is like less than 1%, more or less. She was telling me that only one person who she's, uh, who she's had has had to have further surgery, which I think is really, really good as a result, eh? Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Then after after I spoke after I spoke to her, 
and oh, I also saw the results of what my surgery is going to look like. I've seen uh, some pictures um, of it was just it was just a picture of like the same person, but at like different angles and stuff, and what to expect. I found out with my dressings um, that I'm going to be able to have a shower, so that's good. That's the train has gone really really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> up a little bit there we go <coughs> so yeah um, so I saw I saw some pictures and I was really impressed with it. Like, it did look really really good this was just after the dressing rooms came off so it was still bruised said to expect bruising swelling stuff like that that goes down after after the healing process of like six weeks and stuff as long as there's no complications then I went over to the pre-op assessment area in the hospital and the I got called in to have my weight checked, my height checked, blood pressure and then I had to do a MRSA check which was basically um, what they call it's like Q-tips or not? Swabs, that's the one. <laughs> Long Q-tips. Uh, so yeah just swabs in like different areas like my nose, under my arms, groin area, stuff like that. Um, then I had to give a urine sample as well, which was fun. Uh, then after that I went and spoke to another woman. Uh, she asked me a load of questions, um, just stuff about like my lifestyle, do, do I smoke, do I drink, um, what else did she ask me? She asked me loads of stuff like if I had any, um, if I take any medication, stuff like that. Um, if, if, if I take recreational drugs, um, stuff like that. So after that, I got a blood test, and then the woman gave me loads of leaflets about loads of different things. Um, so the first one is the hospital handbook. That one just basically um, tells you about what it's like at the hospital, what to expect, what to bring. What? Hospital chapter. Yeah, hospital chatter. Um, and then this is the thickest book that I've got, and this is about. It's called You and Your Anesthetic. I've had a wee read through that. Um, it's actually not that bad. It just tells you that there can be things that go wrong, and I will experience some like minor side effects afterwards. Like, um, let's see, side effects and complications. So throat, dizziness, blood vision, blood vision, shivering, headaches, itching, aches and pain, aches, pains and backache, pain during injection of drugs, <coughs> um, bruising, soreness, confusion or memory loss. Um, there's a chance I could um, get a chest infection, but that's not very likely. Um, the ones that I'm reading out now aren't, aren't very likely. Um, bladder problems, muscle pains, slow breathing, depressed respiration, damage to teeth, lips or gums, um, existing medical conditions getting worse, and these are like the rare, very rare complications, awareness, um, basically that's just like when you're in surgery, like you're awake but you can't do anything about it, um, but you still feel everything don't you? Yeah, but that is like really, really unlikely to happen. Uh, damage to my eyes, damage to the larynx or the esophagus, um, serious al allergy to drugs, nerve damage, death, equipment failure. Um, I don't know. What... Yeah. So yeah, it's not. It's not too bad. I've had I've had like a wee flick through it. It's not like the worst thing in the world. And most of most of the dead serious things like only happen once in a blue moon. So I'm not that worried about it really. Like I know I'm in good hands. I know I know someone who's went to the same surgeon. Good evening, our ladies and gentlemen. If you do require us to purchase some refreshments, we do have a light refreshment trolley situated in coach C. That's the third coach on the front of the train. That's coach C. If you want to purchase any light refreshments, to sell tea. Coffee, hot chocolate, soft drinks, 
alcoholic beverages and various sandwiches and snacks. Thank you. I can't be bothered starting the video again, so I'm just playing through that. Um, anyway, then after that, um, preventions of pressure ulcers. That's sores. Yeah, that's just bed sores, but that's mostly for like older people. And like my surgeon has said to me, like, and I've also read in the books that once like I do have my surgery, they will be wanting me to get up out of bed, walk about, stuff like that. Um, one thing that they were worried about was uh, reducing the risk of blood clots. Um, so yeah, um, blood clots um, do increase for people who are on hormone replacement therapy. Uh, just because testosterone and stuff like that thickens the blood. Um, but um, I haven't taken a testosterone shot for like nearly by the time my surgery comes, I'll be a month, three months and ten days from my last shot. So I don't need, I don't really need to worry about that. That's not something that I have a major like concern about. I'm sure I'll be fine. In the leaflet, it says that they do everything they can to reduce the risks. So that's not too bad. Then we've got the last one is about MRSA. So I got tested for that today. Um, Basically that's like one of the really important reasons you get your pre-op into Like, because then it can test you with MRSA. If I do have it, then um, it's just like a course of antibiotics, isn't it? Depending on where it is, like, you can get it in like your nose, under your arms, the groin area, stuff like that. So if it's like in your nose, they normally give you like a nose spray, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, normally give you a nose spray. Um, oh. <coughs> <laughs> that was mum trying to use a recycle. Uh, oh, you good? Hi. Uh, so, yeah, that's. um. So, if it's in your nose, they give you a nose spray. If it's anywhere else, then they give you a post antibiotics. Um, so, that's why. If you are leaving the train, please make sure you take all your personal belongings with you. So yeah, that's why um, you get tested for MR MRSA um, for your pre-op, for then they've got plenty of time to get rid of it before you get your surgery. Um, right. um, so yeah, I got I got the letter saying saying like exactly when my surgery is. I need to come the day before um, my surgery because I need to be admitted at half seven. Um, and then I don't know exactly what time I'll get my surgery, but I don't think it'll be too long after that. And I'm actually like getting more and more excited thinking about it. Like it does feel like I'm getting closer, but I don't want to let myself get too excited just in case anything happens where I can't get where I can't get it. So it's not too bad. Like, but I am really really happy about it. Like, so. Yeah, anything else? No? I can't think of anything else. Um, this is Wigginall Preston. <coughs> the next stop will be Preston. So yeah, I'm just like really excited about it and can't wait. To be honest, like I've asked my mum if I'm allowed to start packing my stuff on like three weeks away. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, give you an update later on guys. Thanks for watching. Hi. No, you need to come in and say bye. Come in and say bye. Oh, well, we're both very tired. Yeah, we're both very, very tired. So when we get home, we'll probably be going straight to sleep. <laughs> um, so yeah, see you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.